Welcome back to my channel. This will be a review of the All About Reading Level 1 materials. I chose to purchase the Alpha Universal set that incorporates these curriculum materials as well as what's called the basic pack um, for the magnet tiles. So inside this set we got the Level 1 readers and there's three of them and they hold the stories inside. So there's multiple stories within each of these readers. We also have the teacher's manual and the activity book. The activity book has been used, so it looks very thin. And I'll go over what it looks like on the inside of what I like about this program. It also included all of these flashcards that I cut out. Then in the basic pack, that's the tiles that you get with the letters and they're color coded. So your consonants are blue and your vowels are red to help the students. These are also color coded, so you have your letter sound cards in yellow and your word cards in green. It also includes the Phonics Sound app, and I think anyone can download this app. I even use it in my classroom. I use this program with my son at home, homeschooling, but I've also used the app, the sound app, in my classroom just because it's great to help students practice their sounds. I have this downloaded on two devices. I have it downloaded on my cell phone as well as my iPad. And we use this in the beginning. We haven't used it as much except when we're using, we're learning a new sound. In addition to these curriculum materials that were a part of the Alpha Universal set, in addition, it was also recommended buying um, Reading Games with Ziggy the Zebra. As we go into this, I'll start with the Level 1 Teacher's Manual. I've been teaching for about four years, and it was definitely something important to me to find a program for my son who has autism that was multi a multi-sensory program, and it was also great that it was mastery-based and customizable. When working in a classroom, sometimes you're not going to be able to have each student master something before you can move on to the next lesson. When I'm teaching at home, my son to homeschool him, I want him to master a concept before we move on and this program is super flexible in that way, which I enjoy. One thing that's nice about this program is each lesson gives you a checklist at the top of the page of what materials you need. So when you're pulling everything out and getting it ready, you know exactly what you need to have. It also goes over things that I want to re review for myself before, and it's not paragraphs and paragraphs. So before you begin, this is all I need to read before I start that lesson with my son. It is also great that at the end of each lesson, it says, read aloud to your student for 20 minutes. The program stresses not going beyond 20 minutes a day with your student. It also stresses that if your student or child is beginning to be fatigued no matter how many minutes you have gone to stop the instruction there and then start with your read aloud that you're doing with your child. For us personally, we usually do our read aloud at nighttime before bed and I do that for our 20 minutes of reading a day. For each lesson, I'll use lesson three as an example. Well, actually, let's start with lessons one through three. That will give a good setting of what happens. So in lesson one, they're introducing a new letter sound. Always, there's like a set of lessons, I would say, that first in a lesson, you're going over the letter sounds, you're practicing the sounds or the new pattern, and you're practicing those sounds on the flashcards, then you're using them with the tiles. So this whole entire lesson, you're not opening up a book, which was weird for me because I've been teaching for many years and I can't imagine um, teaching a reading lesson without pulling out a reading book. But within this whole lesson, we're just using the magnet tiles. You're modeling for the child how to sound out the words with the magnet tiles. It also shows that you're using the pattern AM, AM, and you first had the word Sam, and we're going to replace it with the P. So we have P, AM, PAM. And it also gives you really simple instructions to follow of what to say to your child. Usually I'll wing it a little bit more, but for someone that is picking up a curriculum to homeschool and is not a teacher, this is really easy to use. It's also really easy to use for a teacher. This is better than any program I've ever used for any students. 
And then it tells you here, you have an activity in your um, activity book that you're gonna rip out. It tells you what page to do um, and what you're gonna do. It tells you which of these words are names. It tells you what to ask your child, what answers we should look for from our child. Um, and it also sometimes will give you some little hints and tips over here um, to help your child, which is really nice that it's not a huge, long, drawn out process of things to read. You can easily read this while your child's sitting next to you without it being a distraction. You don't have to read these lessons ahead of time, although I try to read them ahead of time. At the end of each lesson, it's super helpful. You have this chart. This is something that would work really well for any students with behaviors, um, as well as just a typically developing child. Students are motivated by rewards. Um, my son's only about halfway full of this chart and he's so excited to get the end of it and he's so excited when he gets to put a sticker on the chart. They include the sticker in there. I leave our chart just in the workbook on the front page. Other families might choose to hang it up on a wall or keep it in a notebook. I just keep it here so I don't lose it. I keep a sticky note on the page so it's easy to flip to. Um, and we made a goal that we'll go to the zoo where he can do something special when he finishes it. But this is super rewarding um, for a child to have that. Lesson two, and you get these little notes from this dog that's in the stories and he's on the cover of them, which is fun. We're introducing a new letter. They're having us practice it with flashcards, practicing with tiles again, more tile work. These are all the words they're gonna practice on the tile, uh, tile board or the whiteboard with the tiles. Then we have more activities the student would do in their workbook. What is also different about the activity workbook is there hasn't once yet, we're on page, let's see where we're at. We're on page 171, I think I skipped that. We're on page 193 in this and it has a little over 300 pages in it. Not once have we needed a pencil. You need scissors and glue um, and that's it. So each of the things, there's no writing related to this reading. So if your student or child is behind in writing in any way, they will not be held back by any fine motor issues or just not knowing how to write in this reading curriculum, which most reading curriculums that I've worked with, even with kindergartners, it's incorporating writing. So I do like that it's separate because that works for my child. So here's an interactive lesson where we cut out these ice cream cones and you're moving them around and placing them on cones with similar patterns. So you have that multi-sensory piece. It's telling me that I need new flashcards. Um, they call their sight words or words that cannot be sounded out as their leap words and they always put a little frog on them. They also have fluency practice sheets. As the curriculum goes on, those practice sheets sometimes become more um, in depth. They have longer phrases um, and different categories. So this practice fluency sheet is done right before the story and it's usually to practice things before the story. Lesson three, so there's been two lessons that have gone by before they ever pick up the reader. So this will be in the reader Run Bug Run and they're going to read the story BAM. Usually before they read, you review all your flashcards you have an activity in your workbook. There's the fluency sheet. So the fluency sheet before this lesson has very few words on it at the beginning. So they are just practicing these words. And then these are vocabulary pictures in the teacher's manual. It will tell you what to tell you. So right here, teach vocabulary and activate prior knowledge. So it's important to activate a student's prior knowledge to see what they know about these concepts. For example, they might have seen this animal at a pet store, the, the ferret, and it also gives a little history that they're from Europe. And then you read, or the student reads from Run Bug Run, and they start on page nine. So they would flip to page nine in here, and then it tells you what questions you would ask your reader. So the comprehension is all done verbally. Run by run, I'll go over what this looks like real quickly. You have your table of contents, and then the stories are all black and white, which um, I wasn't worried about because it's less distracting to the student. This is about reading, it's about the words on the page. I like that the text is underlined, so they're focusing there. The focus really should be on the words, even though the pictures do help them with the comprehension. But I have seen students rely so much on pictures 
that they're not able to actually read the words because they're smart enough to figure out what the text is saying by looking at the picture. So I like that it's not distracting. As you can see, once we get to the end of this book, they're reading, let's see, <laughs> they're reading a little bit more. It's longer sentences and phrases and I'm starting to get blends and digraphs. So that's how um, a segment would kind of go. There would be lots of multi-sensory things and practices done before you're ever picking up a text, which was definitely a change for me. That's mainly what this curriculum comes with. Here's what the color-coded card's like. One thing I do like about these cards is um, this curriculum is teaching the students to know all the sounds of the vowels. Usually when you are teaching students basic words, you just tell, teach them the original sounds. So you typically just says, uh. On the back of this card, it gives me a clue of what to do because I've never taught this way. Um, the letter U makes three sounds. So it makes uh, U, uh. And that's what the app that you download on your phone will say for you. Some of these I needed practice with because I'm not used to saying them. It's showing your student there's a, a short U, a long U, and this is another long U pattern. So it's teaching them in the beginning all of these sounds. That way once he gets to lesson 48, he won't be surprised when I change the sound U makes. It also gives examples down here of words that the letter U makes different sounds in. So before he gets to lesson 48, this card started on lesson 12. So from lesson 12 to lesson 48, he would have practiced this card until he masters it. He's still working on some of these ones that have multiple sounds. He knows the sound um, for those given lessons. And then back here we have all the sounds he's mastered. And then we have the ones left for future lessons. These are the word cards he's using for review. This is part of the mastery program. He will review these cards that are specific to his needs until he has mastered them. These are our mastered cards and these are our future lesson cards. That is one thing I enjoy about this program. Another thing is this little viewfinder. A lot of times we flip it over this way so there's no words that are distracting. You could cut a little window out of a index card and create the same thing for multiple children or if you lose this one. This is very nice, super helpful, especially when I feel like he's not following along in the story. I will take this out and I will kind of pinpoint what we're working on. Something like this, it would be hard to show him the word the because I'd have to move this over like this. It also works really well on the fluency sheets. As the fluency sheets get more complex, there's lots and lots of words on them. Let's see if I can find lots and lots of words. So it'd be helpful for me to just have a card to show them what does this word say? What does this word say? Visually, this is a lot to see. And um, this is also a strategy called like masking. You could also just use sheets of paper to move along and have the student look at one thing at a time. I have modified a few things and used my own strategies to use this curriculum. Overall, I'm extremely happy and I've also seen online that it resells on eBay um, where I'll get a portion of my money back and I do plan on um, purchasing level two um, once we are ready for that. This is one example of one of the interactive lessons that we're gonna practice. I think it was saying this fox was sniffing around or something like that. And it has all these different flowers that we lay out or no, he's chasing the dragonfly. That's what ends up happening. So we have multiple of these that we'd put all the way through here. This is a multi-sensory approach. He's not just reading flashcards. We're using these words in a different way and he's trying to tr catch the dragonfly. So my son will flip up each of these and sound these words out as he gets through them. Thank you for watching my review of this curriculum. If you would like to see any other videos related to this curriculum, please comment down below. I will do a separate video on reading games with Ziggy the Zebra, and I would also like to make a video on how I've modified or changed this curriculum to meet my child's needs. Thank you for watching, bye.